Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another fresh box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box number 95, and the name is AI Camera Lab. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This is an embroidered neural net keychain with Skynet on the back. That's awesome. This looks like the small PCB that our camera module goes with. It looks like a couple of sets of headers here. This looks like our ESP32 S3 core board N16R8. This is gonna power the works here on this kit. This looks like the little camera sensor with the wide angle lens on it. Little four pin header there. And this looks like the five-way navigation switch with red cap and this looks like a micro SD adapter here we have the 3.2 inch TFT touch display 320 by 240 that comes with a stylus and it's got an SD card reader on it right there this looks like the nice AI cam lab PCB they've made and sent for us this month looks pretty cool this looks like the search sticker very cool ah uh, yes and this looks like the not hot dog sticker which is cool because not hot dog eh? that's that's it it only does hot dogs no and a not hot dog and here we have our collectible reference card got some information about the pinouts on the camera module there and some pinout and some information for the esp there like always, with every Hacker Box release, Hacker Boxes puts up a nice set of detailed instructions on Instructables, and that's what I'll be referring to as we go through and build this thing. Most of the modifications we'll be making have to do with some pin changes and things like that, and I might not call out every single one of those, but I should show them. So you can pause or slow down, and you should see me go along with most of what the instructions are. Okay, let's get ready to work with this ESP32. Now, one thing you'll need is a USB-C cable. One's not included in this kit, but I bet if you're messing with this kit, you probably have a USB-C cable somewhere nearby. I'm also gonna assume that you've got the Arduino IDE installed on whatever your OS is and you're ready to use it. I like the instructable says we need to set this up as an ESP32 S3 dev module. Also make sure it's running at 240 megahertz. And that the flash mode is QIO 120 megahertz. And that the PS RAM is OPI. And we're gonna get the ESP serial out test file that is provided via the instructable. And we're gonna push that to our board before we do any solder or anything as our basic test as the instructions say. Then we'll switch to our serial monitor. And you'll see here when I'm looking at mine, it's all garbled. And uh, if you notice, I'll go over here and I'll change my baud rate to 115-200. And now you can see the counter incrementing. The document also says you'll see this LED flash, which we do there. So that confirms that we're looking pretty good. Now I'm going to solder the headers and the ESP32 to the main PCB here. Here goes a four pin header that's part of the display setup. Put that in place with some blue tack and solder it. Right now I'm getting ready to mount the display, but I wanted to stop right here and let you know, take a moment and read this very carefully, the section of the instructions that talk about mounting this screen. I ended up getting pretty lucky, but you'll see if you look closer than I did, and hopefully after I hear my warning here, you could possibly tweak things a little bit with the length and stuff. Just follow the directions and look at things, maybe test fit and see what I'm talking about. 
before you solder things in place and you should be okay. The main thing is you want to make sure you've got plenty of clearance for the SD reader where it's not really rubbing against the PCB and to make sure that you're not tweaking or torquing the display. Now here's when I've seen the note that I missed and I'm making a little shim out of a kind of a business card here. And then when I trim the excess and then use a little spudger tool to kind of push it back up under there so it's not really noticeable. So if you give yourself a little more room or put something down ahead of time, you won't have to, to worry with this like I did. Okay, now I'm getting the TFT ESP I library as the instructions say to do and that's gonna allow us to talk and display things on the display from the ESP and you know I'm gonna go in here and also follow the instructions parts that tell me what changes I need to make in this user setup file and it tells you where that gets installed under the directory hierarchy depending on how your Arduino IDE is set up but it's easy to find the text file and you just have to edit it to make it kind of match what this says here. And then you just save it. And then we're gonna open up this TFT Mandelbrot example and push that to our board. And when we check it out, it looks pretty cool. So that works. And that's a neat little demo to play with there. Next, we're going to load this on off button example and push that to the board. That should let us test our touch screen. And as the instructions say, it'll have a little calibration thing here at the beginning where we touch all four corners. And then we'll be presented with a little off on button that responds. And that kind of shows us that our screen and the touch is working OK. Now, it is upside down relative to the letters on the PCB, but I'm assuming that that's expected. Next, we're going to install this SD jpeg code and we need this jpeg decoder installed the docs will show you where these example images are i copied these and pasted them to an sd card that i had i put this sd card in the sd adapter and then i modified this code as directed in the instructions and pushed the code to the board i'm sticking my sd card in the reader on the back of the display and when we power it up we'll see that it starts cycling through the JPEGs we put on there. I'm gonna reset it and let you see that again. Now, I'm not sure if it's supposed to do anything else, but I assume that's all it's supposed to do. That didn't really respond to any touching I did, so I guess that's okay. Okay, now I'm installing this five direction joystick thing, which kind of goes up, down, left, right, but also you can push it straight down, which I didn't realize until a little later. And it's got that red cap, just soldering that in. Then we're gonna load up the associated test sketch from the instructable page, push that to the board, and then put our serial monitor on. But I'm notice I set it back to 9600 for this. And uh, this isn't exactly synced up, but you can see it's gonna spit out the direction as it changes from the controller. And you'll see the center hits, that's when you push straight down on it. So that all seemed to work pretty well. All right, now it's time to mess with our little camera module board here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just solder these headers on it. I had made the decision that I wanted to use this in the uh, forward facing mode as opposed to the fixed selfie mode. So that's the way I've got my kind of header set up here and you'll see I'm just going to solder these in real quick. Now as I'm preparing to show you how I'm out of mine permanently in the forward facing position. I want you to check out this picture from a tweet from Hackerboxes. And it's got some sockets in both positions. And they mentioned that in the Instructable. And I read it, but I didn't really think much about it. But man, I think that I would rather do that. And I would suggest if you can get your hands on some sockets, maybe you would do it like this because it sticks up an awful lot too in that forward facing position. And just for storage and carrying around and things, or if you're just messing around with something that doesn't require the camera, it would be nice to be able to remove it. OK, 
Okay, now after getting the module board soldered in, I'm going to put the little camera module into the board. And you just gently flip this little thing up like that and very carefully put the little edge connector thing in there and then flip this back down gently to secure it in place. And then I took a little bit of blue tack, a little ball of it and just stuck for right now. That's what I may change to something later, but I'm using that to kind of hold the camera in place. And that seemed to work okay for me. All right, next I'm gonna load up this camera web server sketch as directed in the instructions. I'm gonna make a couple of small edits at the top here as instructed. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see where it wants your SSID and password for your wireless. So I'm not gonna show you mine, but uh, you can put that in there. And then you're gonna head over to this camera pins header file and take out a whole chunk of that and paste in uh, the section from the instructable as it tells you to. Then I'm saving this. I'm gonna set this to huge app and then push it to the board. And then if you set to the serial monitor as it tells us to, we should see it tell us when it's connected to the Wi-Fi and the IP that we have. See right there, 10, 10, 10, 217. So now I'm gonna to go to that in my browser and I should see the output from my camera. And I do, and that's pretty cool how that's working. So I'm just goofing around a little bit here, I'm not getting too crazy with anything yet, but the camera does seem to work. So I think that's a pretty good shakedown and testing of all the different modules here and making sure they work okay. In this video, I'm not really gonna get into any of the quote unquote AI things, but I'm looking forward to tinkering with that. I'm interested to see if any of you out there who get this kit do any of the AI stuff. Uh, hit me up in the comments below and share some links to uh, what you're doing with it. I'm interested to see what folks uh, might be able to do with this kit. It's pretty cool. And if you're not subscribed to Hacker Boxes and this kit looks like something that you would be interested in getting, as of the time of my recording, they still have some available. So check them out. And if you maybe don't want this kit, they have lots of other fun stuff to look at. So give them a look. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.